It's okay, I'm used to dealing with undergrads. I, I can control you. I've seen, I've seen worse. Uh, welcome to the biggest, baddest panel uh, today's event. Yeah. yeah, keep it up! Yeah! Everybody alive out there? Very quickly, uh, I'm chair, of, as I said, chair of comparative literature upstairs in this building. Uh, in particular, my interest is in contemporary Russian culture and the Russian web, where anything can happen and anything can be found. And the application of blockchain, for example, to those lawless musical industries could be enormously impactful. Um, and given that we've had panels, uh, we, we will have cybersecurity panels this weekend, uh, because I was one of the people who organized the whole event, I thought it'd be fun if we also had a Russian film festival, so if those of you are here have very little to do, I can get you free tickets to any of the films that we're showing, which are just on the other side of campus. We have romance, family drama, comedies, existential horror, any genre that you like. And uh, after we finish today at five o'clock in the Fowler Museum, which is about a 200-yard walk, I've got in uh, three of Russia's most important and fashionable DJs to play in our Museum of African and, uh, so, yeah, African and Asian Art. Uh, I turned to Tito's and I said, there's a vague Russian connection between all of this. Could you possibly give us some vodka? And they gave me 96 litres. <laughs> uh, I, had a, I had a reception last night at the opening of the first film at the festival. I got rid of three bottles. I still have 93 to get rid of. <laughs> so when we're finished, if you want to just uh, come and hear some music, hang out, free booze, it's obviously age appropriate, but that's all in the Fowler Museum, which if you look at the main information page of the website, will all be there. So, having said that, on the subject of blockchain and the entertainment industry, uh, writ large, I would now like our five panelists to introduce themselves, and then I'll pose some broad questions with the microphones moving back and forth as the conversation dictates. Hello, my name is David Kokakis. I work for Universal Music Group and Universal Music Publishing Group. I'm the head of business and legal affairs, business development, and digital. Hi, my name is Matt McCullough, that was a little loud, and I'm the CEO of a company called Rovit, and we are a distribu distribution platform for games, films, comics, books, music series, and blogs, and we utilize the blockchain to incentivize the users and the providers. Check, check, hello. How you guys doing? <laughs> yeah. Have you guys been sitting all day? Like, how many people have been here since the morning time? Yeah, can we, can we like, get up and, like... Like, want to shake it off? No? Am I the only one being weird here? Okay, cool. All right. All right, guys. My name is Jason Robert, and I'm co-founder of Hello Segoy, and we sell event tickets on the blockchain. Uh, our product reduces fees for consumers, enables the event organizers to participate and maximize revenue in the secondary market, and we mitigate fraudulent tickets. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you for coming. Hey all, I'm uh, Ian Forrester. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called VR Playhouse. We uh, are interested in blockchain, how it intersects virtual reality in terms of protecting the very sensitive data that we're able to harvest, as well as providing distributed ownership of IP. Hello all, my name is Pablo Lobo. I'm a founder of a platform that we are still building. The name is Artbeat. So that allowed people to choose who they, which ads they want to use in their content. So that's it. Thank you guys very much. Let's begin with maybe the broadest question for those of us who maybe have not thought about the application of blockchain to the entertainment industry, maybe going on from what Jason was saying, can we maybe discuss what, just sketch for those of us who are from other disciplines, what the biggest problems are and how the blockchain might solve it? Yeah, so there's some, whoa, hey there. <laughs> there's a lot of problems currently plaguing the event industry, uh, in particular event ticketing. Um, rampant fraud in the secondary market. As a matter of fact, upwards of 20% of tickets listed on siloed secondary market platforms are fraudulent. Um, there are also a number of rent seekers, uh, AKA brokers and scalpers, who extract arbitrage for mitigating uh, financial risk for what are expensive operations for event organizers. Essentially, our thesis goes, Events are expensive, so event organizers do all of these things to extract as much revenue from their events as possible, often at the behest and to the chagrin of consumers and sometimes themselves. 
So what we're able to do is we're able to leverage smart contracts. Who here knows what a smart contract is? Cool. Smart contracts are neither smart nor are they contracts. I like to think of them as stored procedures. But essentially, smart contracts enable us at Hello Segoy to program rules that govern the behavior of the ticket from the primary market sale all the way to validation at the door. And as a result of doing that, we're able to maximize revenue by collecting all of the transactional actions that happen in the ticket sale lifecycle. And in addition to that, we can tie each ticket to a unique user identity. So what is a ticket? A ticket is essentially a contract or a cryptographic asset that can be issued on the blockchain and tied to a unique user identity, therefore reducing a lot of the fraud that happens in the secondary market and as a result of printing PDFs and selling those PDFs to unsuspecting buyers and then them not being able to get into the show, uh, which is a major issue in the entertainment space. Continuing? <laughs> sure, just, okay. uh, just to get an idea of how we can weave you guys together as varying responses to common problems. So we, we actually took a, a, a lighter approach to blockchain. So for us, blockchain presented a, an opportunity to enable us to take a, um, a problem in entertainment distribution, which is how do you monetize your content and how do you build your audience? So when blockchain came around, it was an interesting solution to being able to say, okay, if, I have a, if I'm a filmmaker, I can put films on any platform, so now I'm gonna make money, that's great, but how do I incentivize the people to get the content out there, to, to talk about me in social media? And this is where blockchain really kind of helped us out in the fact that we were able to go, okay, now we've got all these providers, they're coming into the system, now we're going to use this blockchain, it's going to sit on top, and it's going to incentivize all the usage of not only the providers, but also the users. So that is really the solution that allowed us to really kind of solve a problem that exists and has existed for a long time. Oh, uh, so currently when it comes to IP, there are um, con value contributors who are unrecognized, and those are really the fans. And, um, you know, if you think about a, a major motion picture franchise that's adapted from an existing piece of IP, the reason that that IP is valuable is because a lot of people like it, yet when that IP gets licensed, um, those fans don't participate and aren't compensated for the value that they provide. So, um, in, the, in the current system, and I, I think we're, we're in a similar alignment on this, there's a paywall. Uh, you know, through which uh, right, rights to interact with the IP is uh, transacted. Um, the user and the creator are in an adversarial relationship. Um, that creator is aligned with investors, advertisers, and external stakeholders that, uh, you know, really have nothing to do with the, the mission of their particular IP. We want to reorganize that to align users, investors, and creators, and keep the people, um, you know, advertisers, licensees, uh, you know, who are external, uh, external to the value as opposed to central to the value. Um, and we believe we can do this with blockchain. Uh, as essentially, uh, is more about the content that is created every day in the streets. So, most. Uh, the, the most part of the content that's created is created and goes up to internet nowadays. They come from the streets, come from out from us, uh, uh, about our ev everyday lives. So, uh, what a plat our platform is trying to do using blockchain, not not blockchain. We're using a kind of DLT. Right? It's, it's a, the same. They have the same f philosophy, and uh, uh, is to redesign some old relation, commercial relations between. Bit, bit, bit that we have in the market. So, uh, if, you, if, if I'm filming someone in the streets now, like a, a girl that's singing in front of Starbucks, and when I upload this, when I when I upload this content to, to to my Facebook or to my Instagram, it comes with the background that we cannot we can do anything about it. And this is only one thing. So what we try to do is create a new ecosystem, and we can. Uh, create a new layer between the real world and the digital world, so you, we can, you, uh, everybody can 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 be part of this new ecosystem, like the creator of the content, like you said, and also the artists. So we want to redesign some some old relations, uh, commercial relations that 
uh, our, our red establish. So Universal Music Group is the largest uh, music company in the world, and we're fortunate enough because of that to have the resources and infrastructure to devote to seeking out new technologies, testing new systems, and trying to improve uh, what has become, um, in, in many people's uh, opinion, an archaic, uh, uh, somewhat outdated way of doing business. So um, it's a privilege to be in an environment like this where uh, thought leaders like yourselves are pushing the envelope and one of the uh, jobs that I have uh, in, in my role at Universal is seeking out individuals like you um, and uh, testing theories and trying to implement those in the, uh, the broader music business, which of course Universal is a part of. So there are a few different applications that I've seen for uh, blockchain. Number one is in data management. Another is in uh, file delivery or song or recording delivery. And a third is in licensing. Um, in my opinion, uh, you, you will hear this, that blockchain is the solution for all of the data problems in the music business. I don't believe that's an accurate assessment whatsoever. I think that it's a tool that can be utilized to help with a lot of the problems that uh, DSPs and, and labels and publishers and, and performance societies have encountered with uh, data management, but it's by no means the end all and be all. Um, but it can be a valuable tool, again, uh, in, in, in helping to solve some of those problems. What, what's really uh, necessary is cooperation among all of the different uh, splintered, fragmented rights holders uh, to have standardization in terms of uh, uh, formats for managing data and cooperation uh, among all of those interested parties and um, checking the egos at the door and not being as uh, uh, proprietary and uh, operating out of self-interest as, as we have seen historically in the music business. Uh, the second thing I mentioned was uh, uh, delivery of recordings. Um, I, I think blockchain is a fantastic platform to use uh, for that sort of thing. Um, I know that larger companies have often said that they're concerned to some degree about being disintermediated and marginalized when you have uh, something that can link uh, consumer directly to artist. I think there'll always be a place for companies like the one that I work for in the ecosystem. I think we will always dominate uh, the uh, uh, the industry um, because there's a lot more than we, that we do than just deliver uh, music to uh, to consumers. But I think there is a place for blockchain um, in the ecosystem, and it could be something uh, that we even experiment with because it could wind up supplementing or replacing to some degree some of the DSPs, the digital service providers that you see out there, like the bigger music platforms like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Pandora, uh, and others. And the third thing, which I'll just touch upon quickly, is uh, licensing, because you mentioned st uh, smart contracts. Um, I think there is an application for blockchain uh, that goes beyond just music distribution. It could be uh, used as a micro-licensing platform for people who license in music all the time. Um, it can serve essentially as a storefront for that sort of thing. So you have smart contracts that um, have rate cards associated with them and permitted uses for the music and film, TV, advertising, social media, and um, uh, we're starting to look at different applications in that area as well. Yeah, it's, really, it's really a human problem, isn't it? The adoption of these technologies. In many cases, the, 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 the problems cannot be solved by technology alone. And there needs to be cooperation amongst the incumbents. Uh, for example, in my field, there's the Live Nations and AEGs that have uh, multi-year lock-in exclusive contracts. As a matter of fact, Eric, one of the uh, event organizers here, uh, asked Hello Segoy to sell tickets to this event. We were not able to do so, given a lock-in deal with Ticketmaster. Um, so unfortunately, those of you that wanted to use your ether to pay for tickets weren't able to do so. Um, but these are problems that largely stem from, from relationship problems, uh, it's going to take human effort to really find a use case for this technology in a way that really changes the game and enables a widespread facilitation, widespread consumer adoption of these technologies. Actually, I think what you said was uh, right on point, which is uh, blockchain right now is best used as a tool. And you know, I, I think a lot of companies, they, they look and they see blockchain and they think, okay, it's going to solve the world's issues. And maybe down the line, it'll solve a lot. But right now, it's still early. And it's a phenomenal way to utilize specifically as a tool. 
like you said. And that, that's when we were looking at it, and we were trying to decide how do we really utilize blockchain and make it really functional, we decided that it, it was best used as a very specific thing that it, it was already doing, which was enabling someone to take a token and utilize that as a reward system. And that had been proven over and over again. And that was basically how we were utilizing it. So we created essentially a hybrid. So we're very similar to any other uh, distribution platform like a, a Netflix, uh, you know, an iTunes. However, we set blockchain on top and created that tool system that really, I think, is, is where it really shines. And I think that's, to your point, is it makes a lot of sense. I am rarely told that I make a lot of sense, so thank you for, Today's your day. for sharing <laughs> that. <laughs> Uh, very briefly, Pablo mentioned the, the restructuring, perhaps, perhaps of traditional uh, industry relations through the blockchain. David spoke to how one of the majors is uh, considering applying it. But if we're talking about, <clears throat> you spoke about some of the hyperbole regarding blockchain and whether or not it's justified. And if one just reads the musical press, one of the, the grandest statements is that this is the demise of the traditional entertainment industry. So could you, put, just for the audience, explain how you see the reaction of some of the, the majors, the major distributors, the major companies, whether they see blockchain as an enormous threat or they're actually ahead of the game, ahead of the curve, and slowly um, applying piece by piece the technology that perhaps, according to mainstream media, could undermine them once and for all. Yeah, for me, it's more about the philosophy behind because uh, in our case, especially, uh, blockchain is like uh, protect us from ourselves. Because blockchain already proved that if you act as a group, if you act as, as a team, we can, be, we can achieve fairness. We can achieve, we, 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 be, we can become good as a whole. If you, so uh, it's really, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen uh, with the majors, with how, how the smart will, go, will evolve. But I really believe that using technology as blockchain, if you put people in the power and let them do tasks that before was doing by only one people, like all, only one chair, one tie, we, we can change a lot of things. And, what, and, I, and like happened with photography, you know, some of them will, will, will become Kodak and some of them will, will become Apple. So, um, I, I think that blockchain is, is not the answer, but is, the, is, is, a, is something that can make us act as a group, as a team. Mm -hmm. And that you have to, uh, uh, yeah, consensus, yes. So I really don't know what's, how the majors and how, if for music or maybe, uh, because we are not developed for music, we are developed for art yep. in a whole. And, like, but I think that maybe blockchain can make, like, in the future, you can, uh, if you're a painter and, and you do your work, you finish, nowadays you have to sell for one people, one person only, sorry. And, but maybe, who knows, that everybody can, can, can be part of, can, can, can have your work. Mm -hmm. So that's what a kind of thing that maybe consensus and put people in power can, 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 can change. Yeah. I've taken meetings with just about every major talent agency in Hollywood. And I can't say too much, but I can say that they are very interested in the solutions that we're exploring. Nerv nervous about them or excited by them? Excited. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, almost surprisingly, in some cases, we're pursued versus us knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. um, so. Not much traction has happened, tangible proof of what I'm saying, but in preliminary meetings, um, it's, a, it's a positive outlook, I think. So are these major, to put it crudely, centralized organizations interested in a decentered distributed network for the kind of reasons that David mentioned? Data management, dis distribution, et cetera, licensing. Is that, a, is that a common thread across, let's say, you know, games and movies and books? I think they're incentivized to create technology that benefits themselves, in some cases, clearly, um, through uh, semi-permissioned or private blockchain experimentation, like what uh, Enterprise is doing, what the major banks, uh, what they're exp uh, exploring at the moment. Um, 
pure decentralization is a paradigm shift in the way that we think about business. Mm -hmm. And that may not be the lens through which they're looking at this technology at the moment, but I think the, the promise and the idea of some of the, 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 the benefits uh, that we are positioning to them in terms of what I've shared with you, the, the reduction in fees, the efficiencies of smart contracts, um, that, that is an intriguing value proposition that they're open to exploring. Um, so it's a really exciting position to be in at the forefront, oftentimes being the first people to introduce the concept of blockchain to some of these major agencies, um, gives, puts us in a position to be able to explain to them in such a way that it makes sense, but also kind of um, not come at it in a combative sense, like we're going to take you down, uh, but let's try to work together to build a better future for all of us so that we can have that consensus. Um, disruption happens over a long period of time. Disruption doesn't happen overnight. It's, it's incremental steps lead to exponential gains in the future. And I think right now we're taking baby steps, but so far things are looking positive in that front. Uh, you know, just to pick that up, um, I think that you know, innovation, you know, in, innovation and disruption is, is definitely started by s small companies. Uh, larger companies, they'll probably sit, sit back and wait for the fur to fly, and I, I'd love to hear your perspective on this too, um, and wait to see how it settles out. But, you know, there, there are, you know, in, inside Hollywood, there are a lot of, um, there is a lot of concern about the health of the old model because it is largely based on a 20th century paradigm that just no longer applies. And so um, there is a lot of interest, but you know, larger companies, they just, just by their very nature, you know, they have annual budgets, they have uh, a lot of stakeholders, they, they have an in, entrenched, uh, you know, entrenched interest, which that's how I prefer to, you know, say, say I, I don't like to use that the word myopic because you know they just have a very specific interest and a lot of stakeholders that are tied to that interest so they will be slower to move but you know over the next few years you'll probably see incremental steps being taken and that incrementalism will eventually lead to a, a sea change as a major i can speak to what <laughs> right. what our perception is of, of of what's taking place here and and just the fact that i'm uh at a venue like this, participating in, in this discussion, I think is a sign of us uh, being more forward thinking than people would, would expect of a company like ours and um, certainly more receptive to, to change because it's the classic innovator's dilemma. We, we, we either adapt or we die. We're aware of that. Um, technology is evolving at such a rapid pace that if, if we don't stay ahead of it and, and embrace it, uh, in a way that can um, um, help all of us and help the, the, the ecosystem and serve the greater good, then uh, I think our expectation would be that we would be left behind and, and go the way of Kodak as opposed to mm -hmm. you know, a company like Apple. So um, <coughs> we're, we're mindful of um, what's out there. We enjoy experimenting. Um, and I think uh, that you, you've seen a shift in our industry, in the music business, um, just in the past decade where people like myself have become more concerned with ensuring transparency and timely payments and um, uh, fair compensation. Um, uh, historically, companies uh, that are rather large have had a horrible reputation for hiding the ball, for uh, taking money under the table, for doing side deals that, that uh, creates value that doesn't trickle down to the artists and songwriters and, and creators. And um, there's truth to that. That, that, that is the old uh, business model. I, I would be completely disingenuous if, it's disingenuous if I said, oh, that never happened, that doesn't exist, that was, that was exaggerated. No, I, I was um, an artist advocate uh, and songwriter advocate for, for many years in private practice um, and um, joined Universal um, later in my career. And I can tell you that, it, that the company um, at least its, its most uh, current version of the company under its current leadership is uh, very much concerned with um, dispelling any uh, uh, old school uh, myths about what companies like this do. We want to be transparent, we want to be fair, 
Um, we want to serve the interests of the creators, um, and we, we always make moves with that in mind, and we put that uh, at the forefront of our, of our thinking. So, a um, uh, long way to come around to saying we're not threatened by blockchain. Um, we're not really threatened by any technology. We've seen disruption in our business because of technology, uh, but uh, in, in, in a way we've learned from the Napster experience. We've learned from uh, what we've seen with the DSPs growing to the extent that they, uh, that they have. We've learned from uh, torrent sites and uh, we realize that we have to be a part of the discussion and a part of the solution, otherwise it will be more harmful to us and to everyone else in the ecosystem. Pablo spoke with great romance about the potential of this technology, and you almost spoke of it in terms of a moral rectitude, the fact that it should be there, it ought to be there, almost in political democratic terms. So what are the obstacles to widespread adoption of this technology currently? If it seems so obviously fair and correct, what lies in front of the entertainment industry and blockchain that is maybe slowing or complicating a long-term relationship? Uh, when will people know, when will people hear about it every day on mainstream news? I, I don't think that the, the, the for uh, like, the mainstream is not, is, is, is not, is not a, uh, is that what you ask? Like if, w w no, what I'm saying is that you, 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 we've all spoken with great optimism about this technology, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's obviously very much a specialist skill, a spe specialist knowledge. What do you think stands between you and widespread, widespread awareness, widespread application, common, uh, for, com a common... For the adoption of, of blockchain in, yes. in, the, in, the, in mainstream? Yes. I, I think this is a natural way, because it, um, if you look like a $100 bill, now there's a lot of technology there. So everybody knows blockchain because of Bitcoin, but blockchain is much, is much more than that. Right. Much more than that. So. Uh, I think currencies will show uh, you will take part of the of the of the the job to show people to spread the technology because if like if you look at for a hundred dollar bill there's a lot of technology there but two thousand years ago there was like a coin that is with iron that's nothing so mm -hmm. and and blockchain some I think people will understand that blockchain is just a, is, is is a tool to do a lot of things but uh, in to go mainstream is about is only about a question of time because now everybody thinks talk, talking about ID, talking about like currency, and as more it evolves, more we're gonna have a lot of new new ways to use blockchain, DLTs, and and different kinds of DLTs. I think that DLT will, will evolve a lot. DLT is like a distributed ledger uh, technology. So, and uh, I. Like, there's a mainstream guy here that's like Matt Soro. He came from, main, from mainstream to help us in the middle of the street mm -hmm. to spread this. So, so Matt Soro is a, the original drum for Guns N' Roses, Velvet Revolver, and we need main, to go mainstream. And uh, we, I think one, each one of us find different ways to, to take this mainstream. But the biggest challenge for me, for, I think, now is regulation. And it's not about uh, education, it's more about education in the right place, yes. uh, in, in, in where we need to have education about it, like in the regulation, in, in the governments, that's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's, I think there's um, honestly, in the entertainment industry at, at large, I think there's a, a bit of disruption fatigue. I mean, this is an industry mm. that has seen uh, just hit after hit of disruption from technology. Um, you know, really, uh, really, I mean, starting in the 90s, it's just the cycles have just gotten faster and, and, and larger. And, you know, and so there, there's a, with blockchain, it's like there's a lot of people still catching up to um, mobile and a lot of disruptors coming in for mobile who are, you know, very tied to this business model that's maybe only three years old. And they're not ready to, to quite give it up or even expand their scope because they're still sort of running to catch the, the running to catch the first dog and um, and so yeah I think that's that's one issue it's just a, a lack of education awareness and, and attention on it mm -hmm. um, but I, I think this year you're gonna start to see um, you're gonna start to see models rolling out uh, in the entertainment industry that are going to be really compelling and, and really going to change the way that uh, content is created and consumed in, in awesome ways so mm -hmm. I'm optimistic 
I think a lot of us are looking at the blockchain space through rose-colored glasses. I think we have to talk about the tech a little bit, a lot of it. The tech is nascent and very early, and the promise of decentralization is very much a promise. Uh, there are a few apps that could shut down the entire velocity throughput of all transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. We've seen that happen. The idea of pure decentralization is such that every single stored procedure and every single smart contract is validated and update on every single node on the network. That is incredibly inefficient. It is prohibitively expensive. There are proposed solutions to the scalability issues currently plaguing the blockchain space, but they are, again, proposed solutions. Um, I am incredibly optimistic that we are going to uh, our collective brain power, uh, both from a technical perspective and a social perspective, will coalesce to find solutions to these problems. But right now, I think it's a it's a protocol issue, and a lot of the a lot of the promise that that we that that we're talking about here um, cannot be facilitated in real time right now in 2018. Uh, a lot remains to be seen. I'm incredibly excited about what's happening, but from a technical perspective, um, we couldn't sell tickets to 10 stadium level events simultaneously around the world while all of the other smart contracts are executing and people are trading. It just, it's just not there yet. Um, I certainly hope that someday it will be there yet, but I think we need to solve that problem first in many cases or in tandem with the social problem before we can really start to um, take, take the promise and actually formulate that into actionable real use cases where we're developing products that are adding real value to people's lives, where they are interacting with the blockchain without knowing that they're interacting with the blockchain, mm -hmm. much in the same way that we're interacting with the internet, not knowing about how our web packets fly around on TCP IP or what protocols that we're using. It actually doesn't really matter for most people. And I think we need to get to that place in the blockchain space from a technical standpoint before we can really start to see uh, this innovation come to fruition. Well, I just I wanted to ask a follow-up question to that. Do you think that cross a apps working cross-chain, so apps that work on multiple blockchains, is that a reasonable solution? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Blockchains on blockchains, plasmas, <laughs> Yeah, child chains on top of child chains on top of state channels. Yeah, yep, yep. On top of DPoS or POS or I'm throwing a lot of buzzwords out here, but yeah, there's there's proposed solutions out there. Well, given that we're all speaking with such, again, verve and enthusiasm, and we're into our last two minutes, what advice would you offer to young people looking to get into this space? Maybe somebody who runs a, runs a, a small label or is, has access, let's say, to a regional distribution of, of, of media, either within a, a small country or across a small network. Build something. Build something. Using? Not hodl, buildle. <laughs> And, and basically, don't get so locked in with all of the regulations that are going on because you'll get lost in it forever. It's changing constantly. Find a thing you're passionate about, stick to it, believe in it, build it, then look at everything else. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's important. You, you, can, you can easily get sidetracked. Everybody does it. We did it. Everybody does it. But that's to anyone that was going to start, dig in. Find the thing you love to do and do it. I want to say lean, lean into your frustration, like lean into the thing that, that, is, um, that, you've, that you believe to be true that is, that is blocking your progress and, and apply, you know, apply this technology to it. This is, it's a really unprecedented tool, but it is just that, it's a tool and it has to be applied to hard problems um, in order to f find its value. Really wonderful analogy, guys, uh, that I heard last night at a meetup. I'm, I can't remember it offhand, so I got to look it up in my notes here. But it's a great acronym to describe what it's like building a startup in this space. And I think we could all identify with this. Um, where is it? Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. If you're okay with those things, then, <laughs> then this is the space for you. All right. <laughs> Puka, yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> that, that pearl of wisdom is probably a great place to end. We have 17 seconds left. So especially for the upbeat, enthusiastic, optimistic assessment 
of what blockchain can do in the entertainment industry, I'd like to thank all of our guests, who I'm sure will be here for questions later on.